Today is an adventuring day. I was gonna go down to the river, but before I could go down the stairs, I saw this beautiful banana spider making its web. And if you look closely, you'll see how beautiful and silver golden, actually golden yellow, this web is. Something that's really interesting about these spiders are how they actually capture their prey and how they eat their prey. So I've been jumping around in the garden to get a grasshopper because that's part of their diet. My good friend here, Patrisna. Patrisna and I, we always go to the jungle together, right? And we adventure. So Patrisna, look at his muscles. Bing, bing, bing. He is very good at catching balalangs. So give me and Patrisna a few minutes. Patrisna, take five. Let's get the balalangs. And also, when you try to get grasshoppers, my advice is to go low. Cup. But Trisna, I got one. Whoa. Cup, grab, snatch, and then hopefully you'll get a balalang. It's not really, really easy getting grasshoppers, but once you get the hang of it, especially in the sun, it becomes easier. It's quite a trick. It's quite, it's quite something. So let's see. We're gonna go back to the spider. Just try this again. Please, Mr. Grasshopper. Also, in the name of science. Just like to put you in here. I'm just gonna let him attach to the web. Grab onto the web. Okay, now you can see that he's in the web and he's dangling on. He's really good. That's one thing about the grasshoppers, their adaptation is actually to get them loose. So that's one thing we should keep in mind while we're working with the grasshoppers is that they are actually designed to get out of the web. They're supposed to get out of the web. So even now we're battling in between as the third party um, where the grasshopper is going into the web and the web is adapted to hold the grasshopper. But at the same time, the grasshopper is adapted to get out. Hence those spiky, hard punching kicks that he has and why the legs are like that. So. Off again we go. Let's see if we can find some more grasshoppers. I've seen quite a few grasshoppers over here. Um, this is a small one. So let's see technique and cup. Oh, that one was a fast one. Because they have compound eyes, it means they have more than one eye inside their eyes. Strange, right? Who's ever thought that you could have lots of eyes in one eye? But that's what they have. And that's what also helps them as part of their adaptation to observe the natural world around them. Because you never know a predator might be lurking anywhere and it might attack you at any time. So when you do stop and think um, what the structural, the physiological, or even the behavioral adaptations are, in either animals or plants or insects becomes really really interesting so come on let's see over here to the garden side something that we do know oh butterfly something that we do know is that grasshoppers love to eat vegetables because the plants are probably very juicy and nice to chew and I think up here in the garden might be a good spot. We have quite a few things growing here. We have tomatoes, we have corn. This is an absolute heaven for different grasshoppers. Even when I look at these leaves, I can see that there are multiple holes in these leaves. They are all indications telling me that something lives in this garden and something loves to eat what is living here in the garden. So let's have a look. Hmm, It's really, really hot. 
that can also impact us finding grasshoppers because what happens is that the grasshoppers also move away from the heat and they find a place to hide. So here's the shady part of the garden. Let's see, again, I can see there's holes in the leaves. This is all telling me that something does feed here. Whoa, another beautiful cobweb. We'll get into this another time, but cobwebs like this, they're different to spider webs. Okay, so these cobwebs, they have a different structure. It seems like this garden has no grasshoppers. Okay, back to plan A. Follow me this way. The best thing to do is to go back to our initial spot where we found many grasshoppers. This is really interesting. Think about it. Why did we see the spider where we saw it? We saw that spider because he knew where the most grasshoppers are. Isn't that fascinating? So probably that spider, he's been scouting wherever he had to make his web. And that's really, really interesting. Let's take a short left here. So, Another thing that we can learn from the spider is that he just knows best. No need for us to go find grasshoppers far away from his, from, his, from his home. He already chose the best home where he knows he will find the best amount of insects. I do think nature is so intelligent and if only we can match our intelligence, maybe 10% of that with nature. Gosh, guys we can really do a lot. So let's see if my theory of the grasshoppers and the spider is correct. So we're back in the space where the spider is. So I'm just checking my bag to see if I've packed some tweezers. Yep, okay, here. So I'm really cautious, especially working with the spider and really respecting the spider and his space. And I think it's better if I just use these tweezers to kind of extend my reach and gently put the balalang, which is the spider, uh, the, the grasshopper into the web. So come, let's see. If you just wanna see the grasshopper over here, beautiful yellow abdomen. And you can see its thorax there in the middle, the antennae. So with this grasshopper, you can see various adaptations. You can see that they have long antennas at the front, so they can feel their way through nature. You will see their compound eyes on the side. Also the mandibles in the front, right there where the mouth is, that's called mandibles, where they use, um, it's not teeth, it's just their mouth to grab and pinch off the leaves that they eat. And you can see under here the thorax and the yellow abdomen. But something else that's quite remarkable, if you look closer on the leg, you can see here on the leg of, of the grasshopper are these spikes. And these spikes, you can see how he kicks me. Look, when he feels, he kicks and he, he pushes me away. And also those spikes are part of the grasshopper's adaptation that protects them when they go into nature. And especially when there's something they would like to eat, the grasshopper, a predator, they use those spikes to cha 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 fight whoever wants to eat them. But this is also important to keep in consideration when you are a spider because the spider has used its whole day to make its web. The last thing that it wants is some grasshopper to come and break its web. So the spider has an adaptation in return that will fight whatever the grasshopper brings. So first of all, when we put the spider into the web, you will see that the spider does something. It goes still. Why? Because every time the spider moves, it sends out impulses through the spider web to the spider that tells the spider, hey, there's something in your web, come and eat me. So the grasshopper innately knows, right? It's, it's in its biological makeup to freeze and not to move, okay? Then the spider, on the other hand, when he does detect that there's something that's different, he knows when it's the wind, when he detects another type of movement inside the web, he will come, put its fangs right into the grasshopper and inject it with a paralyzing venom. 
Why? Because he doesn't want the grasshopper to move and kick and fight because potentially that can break his, his web. And if his web is broken, he can't catch other food. After that, what you will see, well, I hope you will see this, is that the, the spider will use its legs and it will actually spin a web around this grasshopper. But get this, out of his abdomen, it's going to spray a lot of webs at the same time. And he will literally spread the webs and form a beautiful cocoon around the paralyzed grasshopper. He will then take his grasshopper parcel and he will put it away in order to eat later. Uh, the gruesome part is that he will actually later take whatever is inside the cocoon or inside that web and he will suck all the juices out and that's how he will basically eat this grasshopper because he doesn't have teeth, he can't chew. <laughs> I thought there was something! <laughs> In nature, you must always lurk and look around. You don't know what might be behind. Oh, that gave me a great fight. But in any case, back to the real business. We need to take this grasshopper after we've asked, asked permission to it. I've asked it. I've done a little ceremony. Please, Mr. Grasshopper, in the name of science, there are millions and billions of children I would like to learn from you. And you only have one leg, which means the best thing now is for you to follow through with the circle of life. And that is that you need to go up to the spider and let's see what happens. So I'm gonna come close. I think my best advice is to take you to another spider so that we can actually see if this theory of ours is true. Ready? Come on. Bakhtrisna is on the phone with the uh, grasshopper people and Let's see. I'm taking a fast walk all the way up to the queen spider because if it's one thing that we have to do, we really need to finish off this theory about the grasshopper and the spider. We just need to really pay attention Look closely, move around a bit, keep our eyes open. Let's go slow past the pond. So I have a feeling that we might find some grasshoppers here. So let's take a closer look. Must be some grasshoppers here. Oh wow, I've just seen something really, really beautiful. Come have a look. Under this leaf, you will see a butterfly hanging upside down. Oh, there he goes, just fluttering away. Well, come on, let's get to the joggler. It's, it's literally impossible to walk past any part of nature and not spot something. Again, I've just passed this bush and out of the corner of my eye, look who I saw here, a beautiful praying mantis. Let's have a look. Wow, just look at that. You can see his abdomen all curled up, his beautiful compound eyes in the front. Woo, off he goes. Let's see if he wants to come say hi. Hey, Mr. Praying Mantis. Do you want to come jump on my hand? Come on, don't be shy. Let's just say hi. Let's say hi to all the friends that are watching. Oh, beautiful. Just look at that. Absolutely amazing. If you had a magnifying glass on, you would see on the edge of his mouth where the mandibles are, there's a little drop. This is part of his adaptation to uh, almost, um, what would you say, spit out some, some watery, gooey stuff 
that will chase away whoever his predator, predator is. Sometimes these gooey, watery liquid stuff has a strange smell or oh, still have holding on to that. Just want to get right up to seeing the yellow dots on the back of the ab abdomen. In between his arms, there's a strange, almost aquamarine color. Oh, these guys are really intelligent. They're really beautiful and they do quite interesting jobs. And normally when you see them in the garden, you might also see a lot of butterfly wings because they really love eating butterfly wings. But you can see he wants to go back to his habitat. Off you go. Boom. Back to nature. And as we've said before, make sure that if you are in nature, to leave nature the way that you found it. So, but Trisna is back and we're off to the big spider. Remember, keep your eyes open. You might see something else. Up the stairs. I see a cat. Whoa, beautiful. Sometimes you can even see your house pets. And that is a wild cat. He doesn't belong to anybody. He just lives here at the learning center. So let's get close. Ooh. To this beautiful spider. You'll see that it looks quite different from the other spider. You, you know that, that, that we find a spider in the room. Wow. So here we go. Okay. So like we've said, you will see the grasshopper being very, very still. Soon, the spider is attacking and he is putting on quite a battle with the grasshopper, trying to inject his paralyzing venom and keep an eye on the abdomen, oh, injecting, injecting, using his fangs. And you will soon see how he will put a, a beautiful cocoon. Oh, a, injecting multiple times into the thorax because you'll also see that is where the the grasshopper has most of his feet so if you look at the abdomen soon there will be silk spraying out of the abdomen and this is the silk that the spider will use to put around the grasshopper let's just take a look So he's actually not killing the grasshopper, he's paralyzing him. And he's making the whole body of the grasshopper slow down because it's important for him to protect his web. And it's also important that when he puts his cocoon around the grasshopper, that it doesn't break it. This was quite a strong grasshopper and you can see that the spider spends a lot of time injecting and he can also feel whether the grasshopper is still giving resistance and if the grasshopper is still pushing away. So this might take a little bit of time, but even observing that, taking note of what it is that we're actually seeing in front of us and understanding more about the behavioral adaptations of both the spider and the grasshopper. Something that I've noticed is that this spider has a different color to the spider we saw initially down at the stairs. Down at the stairs, the spider had uh, black and yellow patterns on its body, but this spider you will see has more a black and a red color on its body. So this might, it might tell us something about this spider. I don't think they're, they're the same species. Um, even the web, Oh, the web looks looks quite similar, but let's see. Okay, so patiently waiting. This is definitely one of the most remarkable things to witness in nature. can see a little bit of twitching in the front of the grasshopper, his feet. When I look at the back of the grasshopper's abdomen, it really looks floppy and as if that part of the body is responding 
to the venom, which is really interesting. And again, one thing that the spider teaches us is ultimate patience. He's not feeling rushed. I can see a small piece of string dangling from the spider's abdomen. And I'm sure he's ready to do what he needs to do. So I'm just gonna add this grasshopper on the outside of this web because his movement will tingle and trigger the spider to say, hey, hello, hello, there's other food in the web, come eat here. Because at this moment, he's paralyzed this grasshopper with his fangs and he's just waiting. Because you can see these two legs are saying, fight, 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 something wants to harm me. So he is not really in the eating mood now. Because and he goes like that. Yeah, and what we want is to see how he, there, but we want to see how he sprays the well, silk out of his abdomen. This one we're just going to add here on the edge and see whether he can, I don't know, send a message to, to the spider to say, hey, something else is happening, come over here. Because you can see his attention is in two places at the moment. One, he's paying attention to this grasshopper, but he's also paying attention to us. So he's he's really thinking about his own survival first now. Two grasshoppers. Two. And then look at this guy. He's very clever. You know what he's doing? Nothing. Do you know why? Because inside his body, inside his brain, inside every little muscle, he knows. Do you want to survive? Lie very still. He knows that. Well, he plays dead. That's what he does. So only once he moves, the spider will know, hmm, that's a different message. It's not the wind, it's something else. I hope you guys enjoyed exploring the jungle with me and also looking at different adaptations in insects and most especially spiders. I really see a lot of things around me that are interesting and if you join us next time, we might even go down to the stairs down to the river and see what is hiding in the dark deep jungle. Keep exploring, keep enjoying nature and keep up being in love with nature. Bye! Hi, it's Peter Nicolene from Tamed and Untamed Studio. As usual, if you enjoyed our content, give us a shout out so that we can create especially what you would like to see next. And don't forget to leave a comment below. Bing, bing, bing!